on the inside. True crime in middle Georgia. A man indicted for a triple homicide in Bibb County now out of jail after another killer confessed to the crime. Our Brittany Miller breaks down the twist and turns of this developing story. Plus, it's progress report time for Macon Bibbs mayor in front of hundreds in the community. He talks what's good, what's not in the state of the community address. We thank you so much for staying with WGXA News at 5. I'm Greg Lloyd. Live from downtown Macon, you're watching WGXA News at 5. A sold out crowd took to Luther Williams Field today for the annual Greater Macon Chambers State of the Community Address. And the setting today served as a metaphor for city and county leaders who say that every day provides an opportunity to up the game. Much as a coach would rally his team to push through the playoffs and ultimately win the World Series, Mayor Lester Miller used the State of the Community Address to push Team Macon Bibb to keep working hard. The mayor highlighted achievements such as getting to work quickly on fighting blight, expanding mental health resources, creating community advocacy programs such as the Brookdale Warming Center, and prosecuting slumlords. But he says those tremendous steps should serve as motivators of what a united team can do in the future. What we did in just one year should reinvigorate us to do more. And part of doing more is tackling violent crime. Mayor Miller said leaders are committed to spending what it takes to keep the community safe. It's not a funding issue with this commission. They have made it clear about public safety. But there are other things we can do. We must attack the root causes that create the crime. The mayor says Macon's potential can be realized only if people dream big. From airport improvements. I'm excited about the possibility of being able to get on a plane in downtown in, in Macon, Georgia and travel somewhere else on vacation without having to drive to Atlanta. To the benefits a revitalized Macon Mall will bring. It will be full of people bringing their money to fellowship and have a good time on many occasions. Miller says future challenges will come, but says a united Macon Bibb team can handle anything. Another big item that will impact the state of the Macon community going forward is who will be the next leader of the Bibb County School District. Now tonight, the Board of Education plans to meet in about an hour to list the finalists to follow current superintendent Dr. Curtis Jones. Jones announced he's retiring at the end of the school year. Ronald Shipman with the Greater Macon Chamber of Commerce says the district's next superintendent should be an internal candidate, one who learned under the leadership of Dr. Jones. So the system itself, Dr. Jones administration itself, has set a bar, has set a standard for deliverance of results. I'm speaking on behalf of the business community. 800 plus businesses, membership businesses, that want great products, and the products are great students. WGXA plans to attend tonight's Board of Education meeting. We'll pass along the names of those finalists online later and on air later tonight as well. Well, developing now, it sounds like a true crime story that you'd see on network television, but it's happening right now, and it's happening right here in middle Georgia. A man now free after a shocking confession. Our Brittany Miller covered the Border House murders where the case all started. She joins us live now in the studio with more. Hey, Brittany. Good evening, Greg. Well, a cold and cunning criminal is how the Twiggs County Sheriff describes a man who pleaded guilty to a double homicide in Twiggs County, then confessed to a triple homicide in Bibb County. But that Bibb County murder wasn't unsolved. A different man was facing charges for it. In November 2020, Bibb County investigators walked into a house of horrors. Three people living together in a boarding house had been bludgeoned to death and what Sheriff David Davis calls a vicious attack. It's very disturbing. One of the victims had just filed a temporary protective order against a former tenant after she claimed he threatened to harm her. Within hours, 
That tenant was arrested and charged with murder. They rushed to arrest him and point the finger at him uh, and indict him. Today, nearly two years later, Ronald Green has been released and his lawyer expects for those charges to be dropped. It was a weak case uh, from our viewpoint, even before this other person came in and admitted that he did it. That other person is Charles Bobo Rowland. He's very cold. And he's already a convicted killer. You can tell that he's not very remorseful about anything. One month ago, Charles Rowland pleaded guilty to the murders of Fred and Peggy White, a well-known family in the Macon community. The sheriff says somewhere during the 20 hours of interviews with investigators, Rowland started talking about other murders he committed. There are certain people that do stuff they like to boast about. Chief Deputy Buddy Long was in the room and explained that Roland told him about multiple murders in Bibb County and even one in Atlanta. The confession that piqued their interest was for the murders of Alaric Cornelius, Alice Randall, and Chester Novak at a boarding house. Once we got further into our interviews and got to that point where he was talking about that, I, I didn't doubt him at all. Sheriff Mitchum says his office immediately got on the phone with Bibb County investigators. Despite already serving two consecutive life sentences for murder and confessing to at least three more, Sheriff Mitchum says Roland's motive wasn't to kill. It was money. Every time it would have something to do with a burglary, a theft, a robbery, or all of the above. With a meek and mild demeanor, authorities say Roland doesn't fit the description of a calculating criminal, but looks can be deceiving. I, I wouldn't want to have to deal with him as a civilian. Well, in a statement, District Attorney Anita R. Howard says no decision has been made about the dismissal of the case against Mr. Green. Reporting live from the studio, Brittany Miller, WGXA News. All right, Brittany, thank you for that. And now to an update from yesterday's long standoff in Bibb County. We now know the identity of the man who died by suicide and the woman arrested in the case. Sheriff's deputies were attempting to serve warrants at a home on Thomas Drive. Two suspects refused to answer the door and barricaded themselves inside. Eventually, a woman identified as Stephanie Ayla left the house and was arrested for false imprisonment and rape party to a crime. Around two hours later, the second suspect, confirmed now to be Sotero Colon, took his own life. Uh, Ayla is being held without bond. Looking at our local economy after a couple months of steady unemployment drops, the news for the latest numbers are not as encouraging for Macon. Georgia Labor Commissioner Mark Butler says Macon's unemployment rate for March stands at 3.7%. That's up a tenth of a point in the past month. However, compare that to a year ago and the number is still encouraging. Butler says despite the slight unemployment increase, Macon's labor force does continue to grow. He also points out that Macon added more than 100 jobs in the past month. The new number of people signing up for unemployment benefits stayed near a 53 year low last week. New claims dropped by 2000 to 184,000 in mid April. It's a sign that work is easy to find and that layoffs remain at record lows. Now, continuing claims, though, declined to 1.41 million. Inflation and consumer prices, they are certainly taking a toll on all of our wallets and our mental wellness as well. Cheryl Cassone has more on ways to protect both. For many Americans, finances have become a difficult subject thanks to U.S. inflation numbers hitting a 40-year high and soaring gas prices. The math is devastating, particularly at the gas pump or if you're trying to buy a used car. Uh, that's where people are getting just absolutely hammered. We're noticing it at the grocery store. Personal finance expert Dave Ramsey and mental health expert Dr. John Deloney raising awareness about the correlation between financial wellness and mental health. We were all just completely stressed out and our, our, our emotional gas tanks got empty. We were depleted during this whole pandemic process and then we get hit again with inflation. It's hard to keep our head up and hard to keep fighting through. It doesn't surprise me when I see these, the stats that, that 
70% of Americans are stressed, the anxiety rates are going up, the depression rates are going up. None of that surprises me when I look at the ecosystem that we're living in. Ramsey says successful personal finance consists of 80% behavior and just 20% head knowledge. And he encourages changes in everyday thoughts and actions. Say for a positive force, the future idea that I'm going to build wealth and pleasure. And that's a much better motivator for saving. Ramsey and Deloney say Americans have a hard time with saving, primarily due to our psychology. The idea that, that there's something about growing up that's tied to the ability to, to, to put off pleasure. So we live in an ecosystem that sets us up to be scared and frightened and on alert at all times. And when our brain goes on alert, when we get scared, it actually trades accuracy for speed. It trades the quote unquote right decision for the easiest, quickest one. So next time an ad for a potential purchase catches your eye, you might want to think twice. And so we're chasing safety, we're chasing fear in all the wrong places. And we look up and we have a pile of debt, a pile of shiny toys in our house that we don't even want or need, and we find ourselves in a mess. Cheryl Cassoni, Fox Business. We are gonna see some warmer temperatures moving in as we head into the weekend. We'll let you know what day we could break a record high.